Oh my goodness. God, sorry, I was in the restroom. It's intermission. Christina, are you eating a my favorite flop cookie? My boo. Wait, are you drinking coffee out of a my favorite flop mug? It's intermission. I had to stay on brand. I mean, we do have a merch store, which you can find at www.myfavoriteflop.com. Um, oh my goodness. Well, hi, everybody. Here's an unexpected surprise for you. You didn't think you were getting an after the bows during intermission, but we're here. We're here. That's right. We're bringing you some extra goodies. So we've already given away a mug. A mug. Which you can find. Oh. Which you can find on our website, www.myfavoriteflop.com, as we, lo along with a bunch of other merch. We gave away right. cookies. Cookies, Missy's Qu Quarantine Cookies, which you can buy from Missy's mm. Quarantine Cookies, some My Favorite Flop cookie deliciousness. But we're not done yet. No, we're not. We are giving you a special intermission edition of After the Bows, uh, inspired by those, you know, conversation with a Broadway star that you find in your playbill. And, you know, as you're sitting there drinking your $30 cocktail, you're always like, hmm, I want to know what Brian Darcy James is up to today. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So here we are. Now, this was inspired because episode 11, we did all about chess. And on International Women's Day, we shared this amazing clip. <laughs> Julia Murney then retweeted this clip and it right. went viral. It like, went viral, Bobby. Like 50,000 views. I can't even. I can't even. Yeah, it's great. And uh, so Julia uh, got in touch with us and we have her here today. That's right. Your interview with the star is with Julia Murney, all about chess. This all is about everything chess. you've ever wanted. So please welcome Miss Julia Murney. Julia Murney. <sighs> Welcome, Julia! Welcome, Julia! Hey! Such a Thank glare. So I can't, like, <laughs> figure it out. It's fine. It's fine. It's fine. You look great. It's great. Oh. It's great. It's live. It's live. It is. <laughs> it is alive, even. <laughs> Thank you so much for being here. It means so much to us. Thank you for having me. Your show is okay. so fun. <clears throat> oh, thanks, man. This is exciting when people listen to it. <laughs> Oh my goodness. <laughs> well, so we have you here for this special episode of After the Bows because on International Women's Day, I decided to post some clips of some of my favorite female performances. And literally the first one that came to mind was you singing that ridiculous high note in the chess concert at the Actors Fund. And I mean, I have been obsessed with that clip since my college days. And I don't even think I asked Christina or our executive producer, Stephen, if I could do it. I'm like, I'm just going to do it. And then we started posting other ones. But you shared it, and it has like 50,000 views. Does it really? Yes. Yeah. I didn't know that. <laughs> it, was, it was kind of viral. It kind of, like, okay. You, you shared it, but then Seth Seth got in and commented, and a bunch of other people came in and was commented. It the, I, I'm trying to remember. Was it the rehearsal footage the rehearsal or the footage? Or the rehearsal? Yeah, okay. the rehearsal. It was so casual. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> we were in rehearsal. We we're supposed to have the lanyard on. Uh, Absolutely, oh. I'm, it is literally one of the most epic things I think I've ever seen. Well, thank you. Um, I want to say in full disclosure that that high note, um, I lifted. I did not come up with it on my on my own. I, <clears throat> excuse me, I lifted that note from a girl, and now I'm not gonna remember her name, which makes me a terrible person, but there is a singer who, and I actually didn't know who she was at all. I just heard it on some random recording, and when I was rehearsing the song at Seth's, I like tried it. You can't try anything in front of Seth, 
unless you're prepared to then do it for the rest of your days. <laughs> because if he likes it, he was like, oh, you're doing that. And I was like, uh oh, uh oh, now I'm stuck. And but when you posted that, I think it was from when it went viral. Um, the woman who sang it somehow got in on the thing on like the thread really and said, like she saw it and she said something about like it looks like somebody heard my recording of and i was like it's you oh i'm so glad to, thank you like i i didn't i i have always tried to give props sure because i didn't want to be like thank you yeah. <laughs> if you're if you're like pilfering stuff off the counter. I think it's only fair that you're like, I'm going to take this. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. Um, it's the like, highest so form I, of compliment, right? Right. So I'm hoping that she's not mad. Cause I, I very much responded and very much was like, you're awesome. Like I wouldn't have stolen it if she wasn't awesome. Right. right. But um, anyway, so that's my full disclosure on the high note. Oh my God. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> Well, thank you so much. That is that's really fun. I love it when we get little stories like that on <laughs> on after the bows. Um, so we're gonna do a quick fire round now. We started doing this uh, a few months ago when we had Mark Tuminelli on um, because it's fun to make him sweat. So we started doing a quick fire for our fans to get to know you a little bit better. So uh, are you ready for this? Sure, I'm terrible okay. at quick fire. I'm gonna, gonna, I'm gonna start gonna be talking great. too much. You watch. Here we go. <laughs> Bobby, why don't you start us off? Okay, Julia, yes. what is the first Broadway show you ever saw? Okay, I, I don't know because I was I grew up in New York City and my dad was an actor. So I'm guessing that the first Broadway show I ever saw, I'm gonna use finger quotes, was probably the original cast of Mac and Mabel. Oh! <gasps> because my dad was in it. Okay, But I, I, I have incredibly slim memory of it. I don't remember what, like, I saw The Wiz with Stephanie Mills. I right. saw, That I remember as a little girl. I certainly saw the original cast of Annie because Annie. Hi. Annie. Um, so it was one of those. But I don't have, like, the adult, we visited New York and I saw <laughs> blank. I'm like, oh, no. So, no, but you just, like, oh, Mac and Mabel's one of my favorite flops. I love, love Mac and Mabel. That's so cool. Has a, he has a solo line on the album, on the original album. I think his uh, character is actually one I listen to. I think his character has been cut and like smushed into other characters since then in oh, rewrites. Funny. But he is on the original cast album with one solo line. It's very exciting. Oh my gosh. I'm going to have to go back and listen now. He's in this. It's in the song Big Time. He sings, I'm going to buy myself a Pierce Arrow. Yes! And with all my friends in the street. Yeah. Oh my gosh. We have to go listen. Oh my goodness. <laughs> no, that's my favorite song of the show. <laughs> I love that. Song. Oh no. Okay. I could go on for about another hour about Mac and Mabel. We're not going to do it. Okay. Quick fire Next round. <laughs> quick fire. I told quick you fire. I was going to ruin quick fire. Go ahead. Uh, <laughs> we're tangent people too. It's okay. All right. Favorite show you ever have been in? The Wild Party. Me too, girl. Me too. <laughs> yeah. Amazing. Yeah. Um, I got to make a choice. That's wild it. Party. Okay. Who is your inspiration or your your the icon that leads your? Uh, growing up, I think my inspiration, not I think, my, it was Bette Midler. It yes. was the album, The Divine Miss M. Yes. I was oh my obsessed gosh. with that album as a child because it was really theatrical and it led to being able to like run around the, and then there were these sad songs and I liked those too. And uh, yeah, so it was her. And I would say now, now it's my friends. It's when I see people that I know shining like crazy diamonds and you're like i've had a slice of pizza with that person yeah. How that? <laughs> like they are they are my inspiration awesome awesome all right favorite stage door story good lord there's <laughs> lots there's lots i mean you can give us two i'll, I'll accept that yeah there is uh there's the um <laughs> The the boy after Wicked one night who was like, after Eden, you're my favorite. Oh, no. And I was like, oh, I, I don't know. Like, what do you say? Oh, God. Like, you know, like it, sometimes the, the kid, most of the time the, the, and also I think I said something to him like, me too. Like, yeah. <laughs> he's, he's baller. What do we, where, where's the lie? Um, 
But you're like, what do you? Because sometimes I, once I had some young gentleman. Uh, He's like, whatever. He was being very complimentary to me, but he was also like, and I've seen blah, blah, and blah, blah. And I went, you know what? There's room for everybody here. We're not in competition, so please don't oh, cool. put us in competition. Oh, man. Those, those sorts of stories. But there's also like the girl who um, who tattooed the words defy gravity in my handwriting on her calf oh, with whoa. a big butterfly. She wrote to me and said she wanted to do this. I have terrible handwriting. So I practiced and practiced and then wrote really slowly like in a box. And then several months later at the stage door, this girl was like, hi. And God, I can't remember her name. She was so sweet. She said, can I, I'm the tattoo girl. Can I show you? And she picks up her pant leg and there on her calf is this beautiful butterfly. And my, oh my handwriting that gets bonkers. That's wow. amazing. Okay, and then I'm going to stop, but it's going to tie into, it's tying into chess. Okay. There was also, because um, as you know, chess was a one night and chess was yeah. Jeff Groban and the Grobanites uh, could, well, anybody, but a lot of the Grobanites, that's his like fan base. Um, you could pay. The reason you had that rehearsal footage is because there was an audience and not a full audience, but you could pay extra to come and watch the dress rehearsal. And, oh, um, wow. Uh, and a woman came up to me after this at the stage door and she was like, you were hugging my Josh. And I was like, will she cut me? What's happening? And I was like, yeah, I mean, that's part of the play, you know? And then she proceeded to turn around and show me on the high end of one of her buttock cheeks, the tattoo of Josh's face. Oh no, oh no, oh no. What do you I didn't say? know this was Thank a thing. Thank you so much for coming. You hugged my Josh, like you hugged him. Yeah, she was. She wasn't pleased about it. That. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Yeah. Oh my goodness. I. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, just, to piggyback, I'm composed. On, <laughs> piggyback on that, Julia, what is your favorite flop that you can tell us today? Lennon. <laughs> oh. Really? Oh, cool. I, I don't it. know much about that one. That's okay. I was in it. So I spent, you know, myself and obviously the creators and the cast, we spent far more time on that show than anyone actually got to see it. Right. Uh, right. Which is kind of what a flop is. Um, I mean, that would certainly be the flop because it was the one I was involved in. Mm. Um, and I don't know. I think it then all beco becomes a very nebulous definition of what flop is too. Right. You know, if, if if a flop is something that didn't make its money back, I've seen lots of those shows. Right. Yeah. People would be surprised that they run a certain amount of time and they still don't make their money back. Yeah. Into the woods. Like, there um, you go. But, I mean, like, I saw, I, if this is considered a flop, I'm not sure, but I saw Sideshow three times. Flop is considered a double flop. Both yeah. Both times it was on Broadway. I saw it the second time, but the first time... I. I, for some reason, I was very fortunate and like tickets kept being offered to me. Love it. And, and it was, and I saw like, I think the, maybe the final dress the night before it opened and the night before it closed. I saw, I happened to see very heightened shows and, um, and I Amazing. kept going back. I don't, I don't always go to shows multiple times, but that one, cause the tickets were free. Um, <laughs> I was so Was it the most like, recent revival? No, I the saw the most. Right. No, no, no. The original, the OG. Oh, the OG. You're talking about the yes. OG. Okay. Yes. Our our friend was in the most recent revival as one of the. Yeah, ones. I have friends in that one, and I saw that one. Yeah. Um, yeah. But uh, it, it was more. I was fascinated because uh, I really dug the score. Right. And I was kind of like, "What happened? Like, I like to see a shit where, like, why did it not catch? Right. It's fascinating. I mean." Well, I mean the yeah. magic of Emily and Alice, like, 100%. yeah, I mean, 100%. Freak, like freakish. What? Yeah. Oh, my gosh. Oh, yeah. my God. I just got chills. Oh, my goodness. Um, well, we're not here to talk about Sideshow. Or <laughs> we, could. we could, but we want to talk about chess. Right. And I know that you did chess one night. So we're going to keep this quick because we would love to chat with you in the future. Maybe again one day, a little bit longer, hopefully. We'll see. I'm um, here. Yeah. So, Christina, start us off. 
Okay, so how did you become involved with the Actors Fund concert? Um, so I had done, at that point, uh, Tim Pinkney and Peter Flynn and Seth Rudetsky, who were, uh, Tim did the, like, the book revision or the book adaptations, I guess you will, uh, okay. for all, there was a spate of time where the Actors Fund did a bunch of these one night, right. big old concert extravaganzas. Peter Flynn directed maybe all of them. I'm, I'm not sure if I'm lying. Uh, and Seth, <laughs> she directed them. Right. Are you okay? I am great. Okay. Uh, <laughs> and um, uh, and they, uh, I had done at that point, uh, we had done one of Funny Girl. Right. Mm. And where there was a different Fanny Bryce in every scene. And it was oh, all fun. ladies. And, oh, you want a bootleg? Go check that one out. Wait, I'm so which, what numbers did you do? Everybody only did one. Right. I sang a song called People. No, I don't know if you're no, familiar. No, um, but I mean, it was, I'm not going to remember all the women. Women who would never play the role and women who might, but like Sutton Foster, Whoopi Goldberg, Kristen Chenoweth, Adina Menzel, Carolee Carmelo, Lilius White, tearing <sighs> the roof. Right, singing I, Don't Rain on My Parade. I've you will not. I need to find that. It's oh, good. honey. It's you have good. not deep dived on the on the. You're you're clearly not a gay man because. Yeah. <laughs> no, that's why we have Bonnie <laughs> here to tell you. Um, Carol Lee singing music that makes me dance. Sutton oh my did. God. Um, I'm one. the greatest star. Kristen did. Um, uh, His love makes me beautiful. Anna Gasteyer is in it. Jane Krakowski's in it. Uh, Lashans is in it. Uh, anyway, it was the and Peter Gallagher Dreamboat 101 oh. was. Nikki Arnstein all the way through, like with all these different women on his arm. And of course he is. Anyway, <laughs> go to YouTube and find that. Will do. Yeah, it's really, anyway, so we had done that one and Dream Girls was the first one that they did. So they did Dream Girls and then they did Funny Girl and then they were doing chess. And they actually, they asked me to play um, Svetlana. And I had already done a concert version of a different concert version of chess with Brian Darcy James and uh, Lauren Kennedy and Rob Evan, I think, um, oh, in Nyack. So that was like two whole nights. <laughs> and with literally Shoshana Bean rapping one night in Bangkok. Feel it, feel it. What? It's true, that's right. Um, okay. Where and, is that bootleg? Cause I want to see that. I think one sort of exists. Cause I, someone sent me a bootleg up once of me singing what, like the songs that Svetlana and Florence have tend to swap out. Right. Yeah. You know, they're not always the same. And so in that one, I sang Heaven Help My Heart Only. Okay. Okay. I think. I mean, plus like group, whatever group stuff Svetlana was in. Right. Um, so someone sent me that video once. So clearly something exists. Anyway. We got to get a whole um, Shoshana. Maybe I'll, or maybe I'll ask <laughs> Rob Evan. I feel like he. Oh, Shoshana that. is hot genius. Genius. Yeah. Um, oh and anyway, so they asked me to do Svetlana for the Actors Fun concert. And I was like, yes, great. And the, uh, I think it was someone else's story is her song in this, in that production. And about three weeks, if that, I don't even think it was three weeks before the concert, uh, this uh, pop star called Lara Fabian was supposed to be playing Florence and she had to drop out. And they called me and they were like, so we want to bump you up to Florence. Now, I think the normal reaction is supposed to be like, oh my God, really? My <laughs> reaction was, but I already practiced the other song and now I don't know it. Like my reaction sucked. Um, but then I got over it and, and that's how Florence became. And oh. then Sutton came in to play Svetlana. Right. Um, and uh, another fun fact for you, she's definitely wearing my dress and my jewelry in that concert. Um, <laughs> Perfect. That's exactly how that's supposed to go. <laughs> there you go. Uh, and um, so that's how I became involved. Like I, I, I ended up doing what I did in that show, like through the back door, because I was supposed to be someone else completely. That's you were incredible. Literally in someone else's story. So there you it, go. It, indeed. <laughs> and so I had to learn it very quickly, and I didn't know it. I was not. I mean, I knew it. I didn't know it at all when I did the concert with BDJ and Lauren. Mm -hmm. 
And so I kind of knew it, but really for that concert, even I only knew what I was supposed to do. It was so fast and furious. It wasn't like sure. you did the show. Right. Oh. Yeah. I mean, I would never know that you didn't know it super well from what I've seen. So I did it, not. It is and you can see, I mean, there are times when we're holding books. Right. And it was very um uh uh clear that if we wanted to, we could hold books at any point. There Peter Flynn, who's the director, who's an awesome, awesome man. He's, I'm only saying this because I feel like you'll know, uh, he's married to Andrea Burns. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, cool. Yeah, just sidebar. Um, but he's a fantastic director and a great human being and and understands. And he used to be an actor. So he understood like, what is being asked of, of that kind of a thing. And he, so it was very much like, you can see us if you watch the whole bootleg, like, that there are people holding books sometimes and sometimes putting them down. Sometimes we're using them. It was it was kind of dealer's choice. Well, um, yeah, I, I feel like I've I see Adam Pascal with a script mm -hmm. in his hand every now and then. Yeah. It's yeah. it's a lot of music and it's really difficult music. And it's you have to do a mental thing. Like you have to get over your own pride where you want to be like, no, I want to know it. Okay, right. you're doing it once. Yeah. So do you want to chance? the kerfuffle, if we will, of perhaps going way up in the middle of something that you don't quite know. There was a moment in in the Funny Girl concert where, um, bless her heart, uh, Kay Ballard uh, was playing one of the late, I don't know, it was Fanny's mother, I can't remember, one, one, one of the of ladies. The ladies. He's on stage with John Cher, who played, um, is it Eddie? I think Eddie. he's like yeah. dancing best friend of Fanny. Yeah. Um, and God bless, um, uh, John Cher, because Kay Ballard, with the book in her hand, went up. <laughs> and John had to, like, figure out how to... And look, it's one night, and of course, the audience ate it up. Oh, of course. She loved it, because she's a legend, and, like, it's it was fine. But Funny Girl is sort of like, boop, 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 a little more chess is... I don't so know what it's about, but it's very serious. <laughs> very so, serious, whatever so it's we're gonna we're gonna sidebar because the next question we're supposed to ask you is, did you know about chess prior to doing it? But you'd already oh, done another concert. Just the answer. So yeah, yeah. <laughs> we we don't really know what chess is all about. Christina, when she jumped okay. into this, that was the first thing she said on the episode. She's like, I don't know if I understand what the plot of this musical. I'm listening to you guys like maneuver your way through explaining the machinations of the actual plot of chess, I was like, interesting. <laughs> Technically, I've done it twice. Know. I wouldn't know. Also, because it does shift a little bit, like the the versions shift. Right. Yes. Um, In some places, drastically. Yeah. Yeah. I don't. I don't think this really matters necessarily. Uh, but I do not play the game of chess either. Oh. Um, but I. I think it's a. Can we call it a dense plot? Like. Yeah. I feel it's, confident that the writers know what it's about. I I I I I am confident that Tim Rice knows what it's about. And I feel like Tim Rice would be, are you a moron? Obviously, it's about Cold War, Biggie Gekka, CBD Bidu. Great. <laughs> but in the moment, you're like, what? I'm belting real high. I know that's happening. Now so that guy's an actor. As an actor, is that what you hook on to? You're like, okay, I, I trust that the writers know what they're talking about. No. So, no. Oh, okay. I have to know. I have to know what I'm doing. Right. Yeah, me too. I okay. do not. I could not feel less confident when it comes to vocal. There's the, there's the, I'm going to curse. Goddamn truth. Um, vocals freak me out. I, I have you. to know that I can tell a, the story mm -hmm. and hope that the work I've done on the vocal and the training I've had will, uh, will, it's not like I'm like, so I just wing the vocals, la la, you know, it's not that, but um, <laughs> I don't feel, I don't feel solid on the ground, even to this day. Like when I do like solo concerts, I feel much more confident um, in pat, like yammering between songs. Right. Which yeah. I rarely, um, like I tend to kind of know what I want to talk about, but I don't do scripted. I don't do, um, you know, and 
so yeah, so I do have to know. So it was a little confusing and we definitely, I, re I certainly recall <clears throat> a bit of, quite a bit of like, what is it? And it's also understand like, you have to take care of yourself on those kinds of one night concerts because there's no yeah. time. We're not doing table work for a week. <laughs> yeah, I wish. That's not what's happening. And the day of, which is really the only time, I mean, we probably ran it once um, uh, in like a, a studio, in a rehearsal studio, but, <clears throat> oh, excuse me, that's something caught right there. Um, but like that, that video that you posted, that's the day of, that's the only day you have on stage. Oh no. no oh, so the concert was that day. Oh yes. Oh, Same hours day. after okay. that video, a wonderful man backstage did my hair, put sure. my beat on for me, and I put on a dress. I mean, you I don't know if you can see it in, in that bootleg, but like the one thing during that dress run that we did, Sutton and I both wore our heels. Oh. Because the 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 so they build an entire set on the stage of uh at the time it was where the Lion King was. Okay. New Amsterdam theater. New Amsterdam, right. Mm -hmm. But Lion King subsequently moved. That's oh, why I right. say that. But they build a full set on top of that. The orchestra is on stage. That middle platform uh, where a lot of the action takes place was super raped. It was oh. really tangled. And so Sutton and I, if you look at what's our duet? What's uh, it called? I know him so good. well. Yeah, there you go. Good. I know him yeah. so well. Uh, we're standing like linebackers. We've got our legs so <laughs> spread out because we're so afraid we're just going to topple over. No. In our high heels. Um, so, but to that end, it's not like this is Julia's rehearsal to make sure she can get through her show. No. In one move, they are putting together the orchestra who has had a rehearsal. Like we did a sits probe. We had sung through it with the orchestra elsewhere, but still, you're dealing with different sound now because you're on stage. You're dealing with what you do, what your scene partner partners do, exiting and entering in crazy heels from a flat stage onto a rake stage. And then there's the dancers. They're lifting each other on a thing that's like this. They're the superheroes. Then there's an entire, for that show, there's a whole choir in the back. They have to figure out the sound for the choir while they are simultaneously lighting. It is a- On someone else's grid. Jesus, these one yeah. night. And the wow. amount of um, uh, uh, footwork that goes in to it, it's, sure. it's, it's amazing the amount of people it takes to, to make this happen. And I think part of that's why like the after song kind of stopped doing them because right. they, they take so much. There was, I was, I feel so grateful that I was in like three of the five that they did. Um, right. And uh, it was cause I was in funny girl chess and hair. And hair, that album oh, is one fun. of my favorite. And that album is great live. It's a, it's a story for another time, but we'll just say <laughs> I had a crazy vocal issue and um I had almost no voice and oh. I walked on stage and the minute I started singing, I could see Seth out of the corner of my eye cause he's conducting from the stage. I saw him go, Oh he no. Knew. I sounded like I had a trick Adam Pascal voice that no one knew about. Oh. <laughs> Fun fact. I do not. You do, I do not. not. Have that no. well, I was, I was real grateful. We actually made an album of that one instead of a live album. Cause we couldn't have done, I couldn't have gotten away with the live album. Right. Anyway. Um, wow. Yeah, so those wow. one nights are crazy. And so when they come off as well as they do, it is by virtue of how hard so, so many people have worked. Right. And um, that's very satisfying in its way. Yeah. You know, Funny Girl was different because once you did whatever your number was, you were done until right. the finale we all came out. Chess. It's not Florence where you're on stage the whole right. time. Chess just like kept happening. <laughs> and, and so you're just sitting there and you're like, I, ha I had a cheat sheet as well as my um, binder of music. Mm -hmm. I had a cheat sheet, which I make for any show that I do when like you're first running it, of like, where do I exit and where do I go? And then where oh, do yeah. I end? Right. That usually takes like three shows to really get cooking. 
You have no three shows. You have just one night, one night only. Yeah. That's you got it. Oh yeah. So f from a technical standpoint, you we've definitely covered like what it was like only living with the show for one night. But as an actor, did you ever feel like you actually found Florence? Like, was that ever, it's cause you only got to live with her one night, yeah, you know? I, mean, and I think I felt like I did like a Hail Mary and mm -hmm. hope that look, it also helps a, a, a trillion percent mm -hmm. when you have Adam Pascal. Right. When you have Sutton, when you have Josh. And even for Josh, that was his first thing in New York theater. Right. He was, oh, cool. I didn't know that. Clear. He was a pop superstar. Right. And I remember when we met, we walked from the Actors Fund um, offices, which are on like, gosh, I can't remember. I'm going to say 48th Street, something like that, down to the New Amsterdam to look at the theater. And... We walked through Times Square and this was back in the day when he he wore his hair curlier and a little bigger. And it was something that caught your eye first. Right. And then people started freaking out because we're walking through the thing with- With uh, a pop star, like- What? With a pop star. You're literally yeah. walking through yeah, Times yeah, yeah. Square with a pop star. But he was also awesome. Like he came, if I'm remembering right, he came right off the plane straight to Sitz Probe with the orchestra. Wow. And he certainly could have given the breadth of what his experience had been, walked in and been like, this is what I do. I got this. And he came in so sweet and gracious and like understanding this was our playground. And he was like, can I come play? That's so uh, great. And we were like, yeah, Josh Groban, why don't you come play? <laughs> uh, and, um, and it was, uh, he was just great, but it helps in, in terms of like, I'm, I'm hoping I understand what the scope, what the actual track of this show is because it is complicated. It certainly helps when your scene partners are that, are this right. caliber of, of human and right. actor. They're on their game. Yeah. And, um, and who will go for, it. I mean, there's a, Josh and I have talked about this. There is a moment on, I know that exists on that, rehearsal bootleg because the rehearsal the entire concert exists on a rehearsal bootleg yeah I think as so. well as the entire actual that night right but there's a moment we're singing i think it's called the mountain duet yeah we're, we're singing with each other and I, I don't know if it's while we're singing or i don't i don't watch myself on bootlegs that's um, fair like, <laughs> as a um so it's somewhere inside of there where we're standing and we're looking at each other and I just take him and I, I angle him out a little bit. So he's not cheating himself. Right. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Right. And, uh, and I think like one of the Grove nights afterwards, they're like, after like you were hugging my Josh, I got, you helped Josh. <laughs> and like, okay. You helped him. Oh my goodness. <laughs> you know, so like that, those sort of things. Like, cause he was so, I mean, he wasn't a, an, an, complete like non-knowing person when it came to being uh, in theater. He had done shows, but he just hadn't done, he'd been a solo performer at that point. Yeah. Where, where you can stand any way you please. <laughs> but I just, I was like, I know the lovely people want to see your lovely face. So just click it out a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> Shove with love. Yes. Shove with love. Exactly. Exactly. Yes. It was a, it's a, it's a, it's a technical miracle that those concerts come off at all without anyone getting hurt. Yeah, Let alone yeah. that yeah, yeah, yeah. the audience is so um, they're ready. They're already they're pre primed. They're in my experience with those concerts. They're not primed like you know like they want to hear chess. Oh, they are primed for like Anything. you could make a fart noise in your armpit, and we're going to be like yes, like they're so <laughs> excited. Which of course, to a certain degree, makes it terrifying. Right. Uh, and you have this feeling. I was just talking about this with someone the other day. Like it's that feeling of the one night benefit when you're standing in the wing and you're about to have to do whatever you have to do. And you're like, why did I say yes? Why on earth did I say yes to doing this? Also, I feel so grateful that they asked me. That's so nice that they asked me, but why did I say yes? And I feel like that's kind of what it feels like coming out of the pandemic right now. Right. Yeah. It's like the combo platter of like, oh my God, I can take my mask off and I can but wait. Wait, 
bad things. Bad things could happen and bad things have happened. And why does this, but, but I don't have to wear, okay. Like, yeah. Yeah. I, I feel you on that. I feel you on that. Yeah. It's, it's creepy. Well, oh, man, you, this has been amazing. This has been amazing. And let's, I mean, we, we told you we'd keep it short. So you brought up COVID. So we can, we can, you know, segue to our last question. How have you been keeping busy, artistic, fulfilling, you know, <laughs> your creative side in the last, I don't know, 18 months or maybe. I'm, I'm laughing because I haven't. Good. Uh, kind of. I mean, but that's a, a good answer. She had on a ring that like in script says hustle. And and she was like, I guess I felt like I had to just, you know, own that that's what I do. I was like, do they make one that says dormant? <laughs> Cause the same. I I have not uh, for the majority of the time, especially last year, um I did not have a song in my heart. I did not feel like I and this is not a, a, this is no shade on anyone, on the any number of my friends who put things up on Instagram of them singing or dancing, whatever. Right. I lived for those things. I thought they were beautiful and wonderful, but I also felt like I don't, I did. I, and part and parcel sort of with what I was speaking about before is that it, you can't do like patter the thing I feel comfortable with, the storytelling part, is tricky to do in an Instagram video. Right. You know, people want to hear a song, and I didn't. I didn't want to. And and I will say that um, one of the things that pulled me out, my friend Will Van Dyke, who is a music director, who, he's the music director of the um, Little Shop revival mm -hmm. that yeah. will be coming back on September twenty first, um, because that is sidebar the first line in the show. Of Little Shop, the voiceover says on the twenty first day of, the month of September. I didn't. I didn't even connect. Thank you, Julia. You're welcome. I, I'm supposed to pick up on these things. Yeah. Oh my god. That's going to be a good one. And also, frankly, Glinda coming down in the bubble, and the first line is, "It's good to see me, isn't it?" Gonna get a standing ovation. The standing ovation. Will stop. stop the show. Everyone will stand. I'm hoping I can sneak in and watch that. Oh, I um, hope you can too. Oh my do god. Do I think that that's gonna happen for like an entire two weeks? <laughs> I, <laughs> this I don't know. <laughs> I'm only thinking like first day back. back. <laughs> yeah. Um, but uh but Will has music directed solo shows of mine before. And at one point, like he contacted me and he was like, Let's let's put a show together. You know, whenever 54 Below opens, reopens, they'll give us a, a slot. Let's just like ask them. And they were like, Yes. As, as soon as we, like they were sort of fake booking, even though they didn't know when they were gonna open. And then for various reasons, we had to keep, it was supposed to be in September, but then he got the thing that he was gonna reopen. So we're doing it in January. Um, but that, like him just, that we sort of started talking about, but then I went and did a concert somewhere else that he came and played and we're doing a concert together in uh, July. 54 Below is doing this thing with the AMC movie theater that's on 42nd Street. Ooh. Yeah, where you go to the movies. You they're screening five different movie musicals, and then afterwards, I don't know if this was already in existence or this is new. On the roof of the AMC on Forty Second Street, there's an outdoor rooftop lounge, oh. and there will be a solo concert. What? By all different kinds of people, and it's expensive. But um, I'm sure. <laughs> but I, I think you can buy a ticket to just the movie or just the concert or some sort of package okay. deal. Right. And initially when they called, they, the movies are In the Heights, Little Shop, mm, Chicago, West Side, and Wizard of Oz. New West Side? Like, what? New Not West new Side? OG, OG, OG West Side. OG, um, okay. And... Uh, so the initial like offer was maybe you can do one of the ones after Wizard of Oz and you can sing Defying Gravity. And I'm like, I don't sing that in New York City. Uh, <laughs> no, no. I, I, I mean, it's possible I could break the rule for because she asked for that and like she's great and uh, whatever. We'll see. I haven't decided. Um, but so we're doing that. And so it's fun. Like it's kind of like, okay, this right. feels fun again. 
but it's um yeah i didn't do i did a lot of sitting on my couch and staring at my dog and waiting to see if she would use her words because one of these days it's going to happen and um yeah and i yeah it was i was not wildly prolific in in any manner but i know right. someone who wrote two novels count them two i mean like I think I think it's really admirable to say that, you know, mm -hmm. there's been such a big push from a lot of people in our industry to just put stuff, like you said, on Instagram and things like that. And for the people who've had the ambition and the desire and the drive to do that, I think it's awesome. <laughs> but I think it's totally great. And, and maybe because I've been through some traumatizing stuff recently to take a break, you know, the world shut yeah. down. And look, there was definitely a part of me that was like, Am I taking myself off of the list, off of the, no. like, because I'm not, and I wasn't like in full disclosure, if I let myself go into that place, there were all of these like weird virtual concerts and fundraisers and stuff. And I was asked to do some of them, sure. but I wasn't asked to do all of them. And it was this realization of like, oh, right. I'm not on those lists as much anymore. I'm a woman of a certain age and um, you cannot and, tell, but it's a thing. It is yeah. a thing, frankly, yeah. like uh, it's all the youngins who all like riff till their ears bleed. And which is a whole other conversation we could have another time. Uh, oh, Girl, you and I could probably go on for days about that. <laughs> and I'm like, you leave it to the pros of which I am not one of them. Let me be clear, but like, leave it, leave it to the, yeah. Anyway. Um, but just feeling like they are doing the hustle. Right. You know, that is part of it now. Like yeah. uh, uh, social media and all that junk is part of it to a degree. And I was just like, I can't, if it, if it means that th this time out and me not being uh, like passionate and wanting to, to, to do things has erased me from a, a certain list, then, that's what the gods wanted. I can't, because I couldn't have done it and faked it. No. Right? It wouldn't have worked. And again, I want to be super cool. Like, it's no shade to those who did. No. No. There's no. Part of me that was like, oh, how are they doing that? How are they feeling so good? But I was I on the same page have, with you. Yeah, yeah, I think music was an escape for them. And it does make them feel safe. Mm -hmm. Right. And all that kind of stuff. And their music made me feel safe, but me making music didn't feel safe. No, absolutely. I totally, I, I understand that. And I think Christina does as well. Yeah. Like there are some days that I'm like, I, I'm, I'm going to stay on the couch today. That's what's mm -hmm. going to happen. Mm -hmm. that's, that's what's happening today. Yeah. And, and that, that is just as healthy. That is yeah. just as healthy. And that is just as okay. I mean, I knew that's what I had to do to, to take care of myself. And yep. so and that, that is the most important part of all of this. We yeah. all went through a massive trauma collectively. And right. how you deal with that is how you need to deal with that. I mean, obviously, I sat on my couch. I watched a lot of bootlegs of myself. <laughs> and I was just like, wow, look what she did. Look at that young girl. Good for her. <laughs> what else do you have of yourself? I have a whole, I have a giant Tupperware bin of DVDs that people have handed me like at random stage doors over the year, really? uh, over the year, over the years. Uh, um, yeah. I mean, I don't watch them, but I have them because I feel we're throwing them out. They're sure. like, Julia, this is my favorite defying gravity. Here's a DVD. Uh huh. Uh huh. Oh yes. Oh, like here's your first show. Here's your last show. Here's your first show on tour. Here's your last show on tour. Here's the, here, here's a show you forgot you did from like, <laughs> what is this? Oh, right. I did once several years ago, Andrew Keenan Bolger came over because we were talking about it. He's like, you have a whole Tupperware of bootlegs? And he ah. came over and I was like, go ahead. And we just put things on that he wanted to watch. <laughs> that that is that how you have, learn. That, that is how you been, learn. That could have been your quarantine web series, Julia. Like you and Andrew Keenan Bolger just going through your Tupperware. That's true. That's true. But instead, I ate cookie dough. Which was also as satisfying, frankly. Cookie it's dough. Not Amazing. All right, Christina, how do we wrap this up? 
Well, let's start with a huge thank you so much for coming and chatting with us. It really means the world. And why don't you tell our viewers where they can find you? Um, And where they can buy your album. Twitter (laughs) is just my name, at Julia Murney. Instagram is uh, Peppa Mama, P-E-P-A-M-A-M-A, because my dog's name is Pepper. And I love her, so I'm not changing it. And um, (laughs) so there. Uh, I do have an album. That's very nice of you to say so. Don't be fooled. I'm a blonde on the cover. Um, Everyone was a blonde in the early 2000s. It's okay. Oh, Lordy. Uh, (laughs) And that's on, you know, the iTunes, et cetera. Um, I have a website that is wildly out of date. I mean, wildly out of date. So you can probably find it there, but just go to iTunes. And, um, oh, and I'm doing, if you're in New York, I'm doing that concert with, uh, with Will. Uh, after the, um, I'm looking up the date after the, uh, uh, it's not, I'm actually not doing it after a wizard of Oz screening. I'm doing it after a little shot West Side story screening, oh. just because that's just ha- happened to be how it uh, on Friday, July 30th. Oh, wow. Oh, after perfect. the West Side story screening. And I'm going to sing all songs with the exception of one, all songs from, I'm going to try and sing songs from all of the five movies okay. and then an additional uh, song by that composer. Oh. Amazing. Hopefully, hopefully also from a movie. That's the goal. But I, I already know my opener is not from any movie at all. So, you know, okay. I'm clearly going to mess with it. Can you spoil which Little Shop song you'll be singing for everyone? Which one Which one do you want? I mean, Bobby? I want Suddenly Seymour, but I don't know. No, somewhere concert, that's right? green. Obviously. Obviously. Okay. <laughs> Choice number two. Okay. Which so I, screen. let me be clear, I've never sung. Oh. Oh, it's I've one of my favorites. I've more a ton of times. Sure. But also understand when you're putting a concert together, for me anyway, I, they can't all be like flip top head barn burners. No, you're never, I'm never going to get through it. So yeah. I, you need songs that are still stories, but can you let your larynx calm the hell down? Right. So <laughs> some of the screen, some of the screen will be like my pitch for like, would you like to cast an older lady in the part? No, of course not. But um, whatever. I am like so jealous I can't see it. I would love to see you sing Audrey's material. So oh it's, I'm just, I'm just imagining it in my head. And then Ooh. another song by um, by Ashman and, and Mencken that's not okay. from, from that show. Okay. Oh, I hope she does my favorite. She probably won't. It's what? a good patter song, though. I'll send it to you. What song you for Hunter College graduate. No, I don't even know that one. You're all no, send it to This is a much more famous one and from a movie. Okay. Got it. Right. Uh, well, thank you and so much. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> thank you so much. And we will post the link to that um, to that concert. We'll put it in the comments great. so that way people can see it. Uh, thank but you. thank you so much. And we really appreciate you. Thank, thank you. Julia. Have a beautiful day. You. Oh. That was so great. <laughs> that was Amazing. And Christina, I just want to say, I am extremely proud of you. Like, for all of you viewers out there, Julia Murney, if you haven't guessed, is literally one of Christina's <laughs> idols. And uh. she was very nervous about this interaction. And I think you handled it very well. I think you did. Thank you. I, I'm I hope it didn't freak her out. I don't I don't think so. I think she I think she enjoyed chatting with us. Well, ladies and gentlemen. Okay. There you go. Like, here is our very special intermission treat with you. You know, we've had some amazing partnerships on this break. Um, with Missy's Quarantine Cookies. Missy's Quarantine Cookies, which are so delicious. They really uh, are. It's kind of absurd. And I, but no intermission would be complete without an interview with the star. I mean, that's what... No. That's what... No. And so we we really wanted to pull out the stops for you. And I think Julia Murney was really... We're very... We're very lucky that this happened today. Very lucky. So, very lucky. And of course, on August 3rd, uh, I oh my gosh, this intermission is going by so fast. It's uh, going so fast. You better make sure your butts are in the seats. You've used the bathroom. You've gotten your cocktail because we are going to be back for Act 2. And our Act 2 opener is epic. It is epic. I'm actually really, really excited about it. Oh so God. you'll have to make sure to pay attention to the week Leading up to it, because we're still, of course, going to be giving you some clues. Because that's what we do. Absolutely. That is what we do. And you better put your seatbelt on, because Act 2, we are throwing out the script and breaking all the rules. If you thought you knew what my favorite flop was, 
you didn't. And if you thought nope. you knew what After the Bows was, that's changing too. So it is. Like we're we super excited about it. Super excited. So make sure to go get your merch on our website, www.myfavoriteflop.com. That's right. That's where you can find our merch and make sure to follow us on all the socials. And we're, we can't wait to see you with your butts back in the seats for our act two opener. All right, kids. Bye. Bye.